This video will focus on how we can graph linear equations when they are written in slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is one way that linear equations can be written. Any equation that's written in the form y equals some number m times x plus or minus some number b is an equation we would consider slope-intercept form. There's two examples here, y equals 4x minus 8 and y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 4 that would both be equations in slope-intercept form. Now, we need to first understand that a graph is going to provide a visual representation of all the solutions to a given equation. If we're working with a linear equation, the graph is always going to form a straight line because of the constant rate of change. Because every linear equation forms a straight line, we really only need to know two to three points or ordered pairs to make the graph for our linear equation. If the linear equation is in y equals mx plus b form, there's a quick way to graph these two to three points. First off, the y-intercept is going to tell us the first solution or the first ordered pair we need to graph. The slope is then going to allow us to quickly plot additional solutions to the graph, and that's because the unit rate of slope is going to tell us how much the y will need to go up or down by each time the x increases by one unit. Let's look at two examples. Our first example, where it says y equals 4x minus 8, is written in slope-intercept form. Because of this, we know the b, or the negative 8, is going to be our y-intercept. That really means if we turn the x into 0, if we do 4 times 0, the only thing left for y is going to be negative 8. That is the first solution we're going to be plotting on this graph. We also need to notice the slope, that is the m or whatever number is times by x. In this case, the slope is 4, and if we were to write 4 as a ratio or a fraction, we'd write it as 4 over 1. Remember, this slope is telling us each time we add 1 for the x, we're going to get 4 more units for the y. That's going to help us start making our graph. Now, when I go to create my graph, remember the y-intercept was at negative 8, so I'll go negative 8 for the y, and it stays at 0 for the x, or so right in the middle of the graph. And then the slope was 4 over 1. That means y is going to increase by 4 units, or will go up by 4 units, each time the x increases by 1 unit. If x goes up by 1, that means we travel right by 1 on the graph. I could again use the slope. Every time y gains 4 units, up by 4 on the graph, the x will gain 1 unit, right by 1 on the graph. Now that I have 3 dots here, I can go ahead and graph my linear equation. This straight line now tells us every possible solution to the green equation. Same thing for this purple equation here, y equals negative 2 thirds times x plus 4. We know when x is 0, or the y-intercept, the y is going to have to have a value of 4 because this entire negative 2 thirds x term would just disappear. The slope, when x is being multiplied by negative 2 over 3, tells us that the y is going to lose 2 units every time we bring in 3 more units for our x value. So if I go to graph this purple equation, recall that the y-intercept is positive 4. That means it would go up 4 units from the origin. When x is 0, y has to be 4. And the slope of negative 2 thirds tells me y will lose 2 units every time x gains 3 units. We would say a rise of negative 2, a run of positive 3. Again, I would go down 2 units for the y, and write 3 units because the x gains 2 units, 3 units, every time the y loses 2 units. Once I have those 3 dots, I can go ahead, draw a straight line that goes through each one of them, and now this graph tells me every possible solution 
to that purple linear equation.